So now it's time to install your flight controller. For our demonstration we're using here is the DJI NASA flight controller. Depending on your flight controller that you're going to be using, you want to make sure you follow the manual and how to hook up the correct uh, ESC mounting location and also the orientation of the flight controller. You can see here the NASA M controller has the little arrow. That means this is going to be the front or the heading of the flight controller and, and that should be facing the heading of your matrix kit. Use the included double stick tape, mount it down, and as you can see here we have two different size X's. We have a smaller one and we have a larger X. The larger X is going to be the standard mounting locations if you're going to be using the standard uh, length arms. You can see we have the edges marked out just perfectly for the nozzle flight controller. Now depending on the different arms that you can purchase with your matrix kit, you always, you always want to make sure that it's going to be the center of gravity when you mount your flight controller. So mount your uh, different arm, if, you have, if, if you're using different arms, you want to have the arms mounted, lay them all out, use a ruler or a long stick or a piece of yarn and just measure from motor to motor as you can see here and find the center of that mark. So that's going to be your center of gravity. You can see here we have another one for if you're using a, like a different arm that's designed for like a uh, Sony 5N camera gimbal. You can fit it right up here in this X and depending on the longer one you get it may be up here. So just uh, measure it out, find the center of gravity. Now once you have your flight controller mounted you can go ahead and mount your radio gear and also the FPV gear inside before you mount the top plate. And now, once you have that done, let's move on to the landing gear assembly. So first off, you want to locate these blocks over here. I'm going to take them out. This is going to be your blocks for your landing gear legs. We have a tall one and we have a smaller one, as you can see here, four of each. And you also have some three millimeter uh, standoff posts which is for the carbon landing legs. So now let's locate the other sets. You're gonna have a M3 thumb screw. Put it like this, it won't roll around. And you'll also get a shoulder bolt screw along with some uh, flat washers, as you can see here. This shoulder bolt screw will have a flat washer that goes onto here. Now this shoulder bolt screw will be the inner screw, which is gonna be the pivot point of the arms. You wanna push it in. The tolerance on the frame is very tight, so you may have to use a, uh, a tool to either enlarge it or take your uh, three millimeter hex driver and just screw it in slightly, wiggle it in, as you can see here. And your dump screw, you can notice that the dump screw right here has a little lip that's been uh, designed onto our dump screw. That lip is gonna lock into this little notch over here, so when you install it like so and have this dump screw tying down, you can see, even if your screw does come loose in flight, your arms will not gonna, your arms will never slide back and fold up as you're flying it. When you're ready to fold your arms, you want to loosen a few turns, and now once that bolt is released, you can fold it. So very clever design, very simple to use. So now that we have that mounted, we want to have the arms. We like to fold it back as we're doing this process. It just makes it a little bit easier. So fold it to the side like so. You want to locate your larger block. This is going to be the pivot point screw or the shoulder bolt screw. You can see here there's two sides. One side is uh, smooth and the other side has a small tapered uh, screw hole thread already. I'm going to tie it in like so. For this process you may want to use a little bit of blue or medium strength Loctite to prevent these from vibrating loose over time. And now you have to be very very careful when you're mounting the smaller block. You can see it's offset. The screw is offset more towards one side. The side that has the most uh, material, for example here, you can see, is longer from the screw hole to the edge of the screw. This is going to be where this section is going to be facing towards the frame, like so. Do not be careful and do not have the screw facing like so. Always have the more material facing towards the frame. Have this in. And now you want to complete this process for the other three arms. Get it nice and snug, just a little bit where it looks kind of straight. And now let's move on over to how to assemble your carbon fiber landing gear legs. You want to locate your M3 standoff post, and you also want to locate the M3 screws. These are actually three by five millimeter screws. You want to put the screw in and 
put the leg like so. Just repeat them for all of them. And if you notice carefully, there's actually two different uh, sides. You have one that has just a regular slot, and one of them will also have a slot with a small little notch cut out. This is going to be the locking mechanism, which we'll explain later as you're finished building. So locate the ones with just the regular slot and install the four or the two posts on each leg like so. Once you're finished, your leg will look very similar to this. Once again, use medium strength thread locker on all of the screws so that way your screws will not vibrate loose and your legs doesn't fall apart as you're flying due to vibrations and you know wear and tear over time. Now that you have this fully assembled, you want to go ahead, take your matrix and flip it back over again. Now notice which way the legs face. The arc over here will be facing towards the ground. You want to pop it over the frame like so. Now that you have it mounted, you want to locate your screws that comes with your landing uh, legs. They're actually the same screws. They're three by five millimeter screws. You want to take it in, take your three millimeter hex driver, and also use medium strength thread locker. You put it in like so. And for the side with just a regular slot, you want to use a standard screw. Complete that up in here. Sometimes it can get a little bit tricky, so having a magnetic tip on your hex driver helps out a little bit too. All right, so once we have that one in, uh, at this during this process, just make sure that you don't you don't really over tighten these screws too much. You want to tighten them down and just back off a little bit. So once you have your flight controller and your landing gear assembly mounted onto your matrix kit, it's time to mount the top uh, cover. Now, before you mount your top cover, you're gonna want to locate these uh, three carbon fiber parts right here. This is going to be your FPV isolation deck if you want to fit a GoPro for FPV flying. We also offer a optional two-axis brushless gimbal that can be mounted in the front here, but since the matrix kit uh, comes with this isolation deck, let's start with this. So locate four rubber isolation grommets. You want to locate the long plate right here with the eight slots cut out right here. You want to take one grommet, slowly work your way in. Just do not, do not stick it through because you can puncture the grommet. Once you get it through enough, you just want to just move it around, make sure everything is all seated and good to go. Once you have the other three assembled, you can see here the top layer, and you have the isolation. It will look very similar to this. Once you have that done, let's move on to how to mount these uh, 18 millimeter standoff posts. Take your M3 screw, you want to put it through the hole like so. Once again, use medium strength thread locker. Install the post, repeat the other three, and once you have that done, it's going to look very similar to this setup right here. And install the remainder four screws on the very bottom of this deck. So now let me put this aside and show you guys how to install this. If you choose to use the FPV isolation deck, you want to locate these brass spacers right here. Now these brass spacers will actually uh, raise this up a tad bit because once you install this plate, let me take apart these screws right here. You're going to have to remove the four screws that you have installed earlier during the build. Like so. Put them aside. Make sure you don't lose it because you will need those later. You want to slide them in. The bottom plate will actually go below the bottom plate. The top plate right here will actually go above the top plate. So you also at the same time you want to remove the four screws down here. Pop it in place like so. And you can see here, now the reason why we included these brass spacers was since we're using this carbon plate, it's a 1.5. Once you put on the top deck, now these will have to be raised up 1.5. So remove the male and female stand up posts here. Install one little spacer down here. Once again, use Loctite. And you tie in down there and put these screws in like so. You want to line up the holes so that way you don't scratch up the nice carbon. And having a uh, six millimeter box wrench for this build will actually help out a lot. Repeat. 
put the other four, like so. And also remember to install the brass spacers for all of the other posts going back. Once you have that done, you want to take this top cover, locate the remainder screws, the M3 screws, pop them in, take your 3mm hex wrench, and tighten it down like so. At the same time, you want to make sure your orientation of the matrix. You can see the word matrix will be looking very similar to here. If you have this top plate mounted upside down, the matrix will be uh, a mirrored image, as you can see here. And now you can't really make, uh, make out the matrix word. So it's just something that you might want to pay attention to. So once you have this top plate on, your fully assembled matrix kit will look very similar to what we have here is one of our production models. You can see here, you can pop the arms out, all the way out, and you lock it in place. The thumb screw provides quick adjustments when you have to fold it in and out. As you can see here, I'm going to tighten it down there. And for more security when you're ready to fly, what I like to do is I like to bring along my 3mm uh, hex driver and just give it a nice twist. Even though the thumb screw is here to make adjustments really quick, sometimes when my fingers are kind of sweaty and it gets kind of slippery or it's really cold, I can't really grip this uh, curl knob too well. So I like to take my 3mm M screw give it a nice snug. Also at the same time, you want to locate the inside one. Make sure it's tight because sometimes, you know, after a few flights, these screws can work its way loose due to the temperature and vibrations. Once you have that done, you want to make sure your arms, when you move like so, the arm does not move. If it does move, you just want to take the screw and just give it a nice little snug once again. And now you can see the arm is nice and secure and it's not going to move. If your arms move, uh, they may or they can produce a little bit of vibrations that will be shown in your video. So if you want to take, you know, really great quality video, just make sure none of the arms are moving and make sure all of your screws are properly tightened down. As you can see here, this is our optional uh, GPS mount. If you're using a flight controller, like a NASA flight controller that uses a carbon rod, this foldable GPS mount does come with the kit, but if you're using a flight controller without GPS, you can opt to leave this one out. You can see back here how we routed our receiver. We have it mounted here, double stick tape, and we have our antennas just facing out, you can see here. And depending on your receiver and all of your electronics, always follow your manual on how to properly use it. So once you have that done, you want to locate the four propellers. Uh, since you're getting the matrix kit, what you might want to do is get a prop balancer, a proper prop balancer, and you want to balance your propellers because uh, these props do come somewhat balanced out of the package but you always want to make sure that your props are dynamically balanced. That means is when you have your prop on the balancer, you put it here, it's going to hold. You put it vertical, it's going to hold. So no matter which way you put it, it's going to hold. So follow your prop balancer's instructions on how to use it and how to properly balance a propeller. And now you get two sets of props. You can see here, we get a standard clockwise. We also get a counterclockwise propeller. So. Depending on your flight controller, once again, we put the front facing towards that way. Uh, the NASA has motor one, two, three, and four. Motor one is always going to be spinning counterclockwise, and motor two would be clockwise. So if you're using a different flight controller, follow the flight controller's manual on how to properly set the motor direction and how to, you know, put the prop on. You want to pop off this cap, install the propeller, put thread lock on the M3 screws, tighten it down there. When you tighten down the process, make sure that you tighten down both sides evenly. Sometimes you can uh, tighten down one side too much and the other side kind of levels up so your pr propeller will not track straight. So just take your time and make sure that your propeller and cap is fully seated into the motor. So there you go. That was a quick assembly guide on how to assemble your Turbo Ace Matrix kit. Hope you guys enjoyed it and if you have any more questions, feel free to give us an email or give us a call. Thanks for watching guys.